It also has Wi-Fi, AMC, 1 gig of RAM, 8 gig of flash, um, and USB on the go. That probably, or some of you are wondering, oh, that's kind of 8 gigs is really not that great. Um, but you can, uh, there's, a, there's a small uh, mini USB port um, by, a, by which you can connect an external hard drive or a Yeah, thanks. Um, so there's a mini USB port um, with which you can connect an external hard drive or an external flash or whatever you want to connect. OK, so a quick demo of this patch uh, because I just unplugged it by accident. Um, right, okay, so this is like a mini media lighting. Um, here is the kind of configuration, so we're going to go to the video, which is not going to be able to do some of the support videos that are going to be mentioned. And then we've got a couple of applications. So, well, this first thing was the big object, so we have the we have to go to the from Google, YouTube, Play Store, Music, and Games. Um, and you have to just build a few more to show that there are some applications on there. And, well, there are Activity, which will see the lean back intent, 
and you add all your customized that for the Android experience, that's what the Android TV experience. Um, or if you wish, you can just create the TV specific applications and then you go, you get to like, um, <clears throat> you get to uh, maintain more than one application. So if you just want to maintain one application for a phone, a tablet, or the TV, you can do it in one. If you want to have multiple ones, which is a bit more, um, <coughs> which is a, a bit more tricky, then you can also do that. Right. So the link back is not really much to say about this. This is basically how it looks like. It's very simple. This is what you have to um, to add in there. Um, I mean, it's it's very simple. Um, about the banner, as I mentioned before, the banner is how your application looks like. So you have to add um, the banner you put it in there and make sure that this well, it's just like um, if you see if you've seen the window details, it's just like the window details. This also contains a link um, of our application that has no transparency um, and the size is between those two. And you have to put it inside the little XHG card folder. Um, I'm probably going to go, uh, I'm not sure I've asked how many of you are like, is there anyone who's not a coder? Not coder? Okay. Cool. Um, Right. So, supporting not just the input, uh, I mentioned this before, but what you actually have to do in the application in, in the user feature, you have to say something to require a follow because otherwise it will not be approved um, by, by Google and it will not be on the Play Store. So, um, for, as I said mentioned before, for your application to be on the Play Store, it has to be approved by Google, um, which is it's actually done by, uh, by a team. I'm sorry. <laughs> webinar has crashed. Okay. Um, so this, this application is actually approved by the team. So they look at they look at the user experience, um, they look at how it looks on the TV and, and so on, so they make sure that the, the user experience is, is good for the TV interface. So that's one of the things that you mentioned that if the touch screen is not required. You can also um, adjust the different navigation, so you can you can see you can you can adjust how the things on the screen are um, in which order they are when you use a deep pad. Yeah. So the user experience. You need to start from the no title bar, so you have no title bar, as you can see on the Sentinel TV. Um, yeah, you can have a little artwork from the theme in that. Um, you have to have some, on some overscanning arms you have used, and what are just so many examples, um, but you have to also take care of that. But please note that Linux, um, the Linux support is only in API 17. Um, you can also support previous um, API levels, um, but then you have to do a few, a few tricks um, to make it work. There's only uh, the new level is really introduced in API uh, level 17. So um, after you've developed an application, um, you have to you go into um, you can support multiple controllers, for example. So any controller that is, um, say, Bluetooth compatible um, can be used for the Nexus player. So, for example, you can use this via Bluetooth. You can use a, a phone, as someone tried back there. Um, you can use the Amazon controller. You can use whatever whatever is Bluetooth compliant. You can just uh, pair it. Um, and then it has a button there. And you just go into pairing mode, and that's it. Okay. Um, so if you want to support multiple controllers, for example, two controllers can... Oh, I don't know. Um, so multiple controllers can be connected at the same time. So for example, um, one of the games, the one, oh yeah, Badlands, uh, can, be, can be actually controlled by multiple, um, multiple game controllers. So you can play multiplayer and on the same, uh, in the same game. Cool. 
Okay. Um, yeah, and there are a few other things uh, to integrate the recommendation system and the search system. These are kind of all um, the yeah, sort of optional so if you're interested in that we'll, we can have a, a talk about that afterwards. So I'm going further publishing an application to the to the T V Play Store. You have to say if your application is a game, you actually have to say um, as Android application. Uh, if you're supporting Game Pass, you also have to tell them that if you say I'm supporting whatever, I'm supporting a Game Pass or Game Pass, you have to, to say it. Uh, and you also have to say it in your web browser. And also that needs to, to be told because then it will not, will not be able to use it. Um, you also have to say if um, this application is only Android TV. So, for example, if you, if you use a multiple application, um, one for the uh, for one for the phone, one for the tablet, uh, one for the TV. You have to say that this application is only for Android TV. Um, a few classic traps which will not allow your application to be um, approved on the store. So I already uh, I mentioned the first thing. That's one of the things. But one of the things is like a very hard portrait mode. Uh, you don't want your application to be only in portrait because there's no TV that is in portrait and you, for one your application will look really bad um, but secondly it will, not, it will not actually get approved by Google so it will, well, it will get rejected. Um, also it uses some certain hardware features so for example I have a prime location um, that also needs to, to not be required because this, excuse me, um, this will not have um, a GPS so you also need to turn that off. Um, the camera, obviously there's no camera in here, so you also need to take care of that. Um, microphone, um, yeah, you will see there's a small microphone here, but this is only for the search. So that's also one of the traps you cannot, um, for example, an application cannot record audio. You can only play search. So for example, if I do this, Uh, so yeah, that, those are one of one of the other things that you take take care of. Um, it, an application cannot record sound um, from from here. And yeah, the most obvious one is the telephone, um, the telephony um, features. Obviously, there's no phone in there. Um, so after you've taken care of all of these things, I know there might be a quite a lot of things to take care of and you need to be aware of. Um, but it's just so that your application looks really well on a TV interface and um, yeah, it doesn't need things like GPS because it doesn't make sense of camera or, or phone or whatever. So after you check that you're complying with all the guidelines, uh, you just upload your APK. Um, you upload your banner and the screenshot and you, oh, you have to actually opt in for the uh, for the thing by there, which is um, distribute your app on the Nexus, on the uh, sorry, on the TV. You actually have to pick that thing before your application can be published on the on the store. Submitting an application is um, oh, oh, this was submitting an application. Um, is very simple, and then after it's been approved by Google, we'll just get Nexus application and get approved. Okay, so um, how many of you have developed Android application and have um, also developed NDK IP applications? One, two, three. Oh, wow, okay. We'll spend a bit more. Um, um, I will talk just a few minutes about optimizing applications for Nexus Player and also for the Intel devices. Um, so since we started in 2012 and 2013, um, we started partnership in partnership with Google. We have released a lot of devices on the market. 
uh, across Europe, uh, America, China, Asia, Africa, even. So we have uh, quite a lot of products, tablets, tablets, or Android, Windows um, that work on, uh, on Intel processors. So since then, um, obviously the NDK has to be adapted to to Intel, to x86, because otherwise uh, the x86 devices wouldn't work with NDK applications. Um, so, so the, sorry, to go back a step, um, all of the applications are NDK applications, so if you only develop in Java, then all of these applications will run out of the box, because well, you have some magic, a normal file translator, and that will translate all the Java code into uh, if you're using, if you're developing an Android uh, NDK application, most of the time uh, this will also work. But um, usually we need we need the application to be recompiled to Intel because you gain a lot of performance. So we've seen we've seen applications that have gained 15, 20 percent performance just by a, a small recompilation, and it is very easy to recompile just from the command line to say. Um, NDK app API equals all, and it compiles all of the all of the libraries. x 86 MIPS, Android 5, MIPS 7, and so on. We also have a lot of third-party libraries that have uh, done this recompilation for x 6 so they, they are supported natively on the x 6 platforms. So there are more security engines like uh, Havoc, Rio, Topos, Unity, and Adobe and Unity, and so on. Uh, there are many others which have recompiled for x86. So configuring the target um, for the game, as I said, it just says anything you do, uh, and then you will load everything. Um, obviously, now that 64 bit has been uh, launched to the market, all, all the 64 bit uh, libraries need to be compiled. So if you take all of these, uh, then libraries will be compiled automatically. Um, but now you might wonder, right, so what if I have a really big application or I have a lot of native code? There are two options. Um, if, I'll start with the one person. If your application is fairly small, say um, 5, uh, sorry, 50 megs to 100 megs, that, that's okay. Um, the user, it's, well, let's just say it's, it's okay to download 50 in the next. But if it's, um, if it's more than that, you have to, well, well it's recommended to split the application into multiple applications so that the user doesn't have to, to download the same application with all of the libraries. Um, it's, it's one gig, um, and only half of those libraries will be used. If you do want to do the application, so the package, okay, then the, the paper is, um, is clever enough to, well, sorry, there's nothing to do with this. So the paper will download a lot of the application for those libraries on your phone, and the phone is clever enough to install that specific application. Although if you, um, if you want to get into performance, um, or if your app is really big, then we recommend something with multiple like APK. Um, on the store, you can just um, upload multiple APKs for different platforms. So, for example, I want to upload one for uh, MV5, I want one for MV7, I want one for Intel, and I want one for Intel 64, for example. And the way we do it is um, we just um, adjust a bit the budget, and we propose the budgeting mechanism, which has been widely accepted. So, the first two, sorry, the first two, um, we usually need to go out, then we go to the three and then in the middle we have um, this, and the last two, the, the biggest two numbers that you have in your present is, um, is x86, so we have. Um, if you have both um, a 32-bit and a 64-bit, we put the first one first and the 64-bit um, at the second. Sorry, um, obviously you can have more options. So for example, if you want to take the linear level, uh, you can take the screen side and so on, or the actual last version there, you can also do it a bit more complicated. But um, 
might not be well, that might not be that uh, recommended. Um, so after you've, you've developed your, your application, you also want to um, upload all of these to the store. So the way you do that, if you want to upload multiple applications to the store, you have to go to the online store or the play store, and then you will see, um, then you will, you will see um, how you can upload multiple applications from multiple platforms. Um, yeah, that's kind of it on 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 Intel um, on Android and Intel development. I didn't want to bore you too much because you, some of you might have heard this um, this talk before. Um, and the last five minutes, I'm going to dedicate to some tools <coughs> because um, in the software division of Intel, we develop a lot of tools that help developers um, optimize their application, see bottlenecks. Uh, graphics, um, power, and, and so on. Um, and to start with, um, I'm actually going to talk about what we call a HACCOM or Hardware Accelerated Execution Manager, which is the way to speed up the Android emulator. So if you've worked with the Android emulator in the past, you see that it's really slow. Um, but with an x86 image and with the, with the HACCOM installed, this is really fast. So, it's actually just like having a phone on, on here. So it works, for example, with, with touch. I can just use touch to um, to play with the, with the emulator, and it's really fast as well. Um, but one of the things that you have to um, have is um, it needs to be enabled in the BIOS. So otherwise, you would have a, you would get a small error. Um, Intel Indy, or Integrated Native Development Environment, is uh, one of our newest tools that has been launched, which allows you to, um, to, create, to create, compile, analyze, and compile, and ship your applications. All of these are integrated into the tool, um, and we support ideas such as the GIF and, and uh, Visual Studio, and this works with Windows 7 to 801. Um, and the package support will support Android for the free and um, uh, on both ARM and Intel architecture. As well as uh, if you want to develop Windows application is also supported in there. If you want to know more details about it, just come to me and, uh, and I'll tell you a bit more. Um, last but not least um, is the Intel GPA or Graphics Performance Analyzer. This allows you to, um, to analyze the application that you've built for Windows or Android um, directly on the target device, and you can uh, play with different metrics. So, for example, I want to, to see the wireframes, I uh, want to see the CPU load, I want to see the GPU load, and when you connect the phone to your PC and you actually see those metrics, um, then um, also things change on the phone. So, for example, if I want to see the wireframe, I just click the wireframe button, and um, on the phone, you will see how the wire can be So this is real-time debugging. And you will see all of those metrics there. You can see where you have a bottleneck. And then you can drill down to code and see where this bottleneck is. Right, that's it. Um, in the morning, that's the mission for the next player. I said it on the record there. Um, so it's been near, uh, almost three months now. So if you want to to do this for the for the MTV, we recommend you do it um, like as soon as possible because as fast as you can get on the on the store, you would get more uh, visibility because there are no well now there are but there are not as many um, on there as on the normal uh, Android phone because of the things I explained to you. So if you want to uh, if you if you want to do it as soon as possible, you might be featured in there or. In, well, you get more visibility on the on the Play Store for Android TV. Um, as I mentioned to you, it, it, the support for Android TV is not a lot of work. I mean, you just have to take care of uh, small UX guidelines uh, in order for the application to look to look well on there. Um, there's no need to maintain a, a separate APK. Only if you wish to. Usually, all of the work should be done on the same APK. Um, Usually, also we recommend that you, if you do an NDK application, we recommend that you recompile it for NTD6 as well because it's very simple and you will gain a lot of performance. 
Um, and yeah, the last, the last thing I mentioned is that all of the tools that we provide for, uh, for Android development or for Windows development, um, which are all free to use. So yeah, we welcome you to, to do that. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Anyone has any questions? Is there one, sorry? Um, you mean on land launch from the market? Um, not yet. Oh, yeah. But um, the 64 bit of the, for example, the emulator was, on, was the first one on the Android uh, MDK. So we're we're getting in there, but no a 64 bit has been launched as of yet. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. I looked yesterday on Amazon. It's there. Yeah. Yeah. I I was actually, to be honest, I was a bit surprised. Um, because of what I've heard, but uh, yeah, I've seen it yesterday. Uh, one sec. Yeah, so it's there. Um, yeah. Oh, yes, it was. Yeah. It's a bit more impressive than I was expecting, to be honest. Because in the US it's $99, but I guess it always happens. I mean, I was looking at the personal thing. I was looking at the Moto 360. I've been using it for a while, so I wasn't even really expecting in the euros instead of two dollars. So yeah, this always happens. But yeah, if you want it, it's available in there. Hopefully um, we will we launch it on their on their Play Store soon in um, in Europe as well. And hopefully the prices will go down. But that's not in our control. Any other questions? Yeah. You said that uh, after Yeah. No, um, it doesn't. Well, they, they obviously they have a process because they have to check all the user experience to, to see that you've got all the assets, touch screen, and so on. Um, but it doesn't take long. So I think I mean my uh, my other uh, colleague has done uh, his submission around November sixth, just after it's been uh, open, and it took him half an hour or something like that. So it's it's, it's not a big deal. It might take a bit longer now because with more applications and more applications are recompiling and adding the TV features, but it shouldn't take longer. Yeah. That's actually a good question. I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, I would assume yes because, yeah, it, it, I'm not I'm not sure. I would assume yes. Any other questions? No? Then uh, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the night. You can you will be able to play with the next player after we finish all the presentation and if you have any questions I'm gonna be around. So thank you very much.
Is, is it recording the, the right screen? <laughs> Thanks for telling me that. <laughs> and uh, also, um, uh, I didn't mention it, but uh, during the beer and pizza time, we usually dedicate that time for eating, of course, but also for people that, uh, that want to demo some of their stuff. So if you have any Android app or some projects currently working on, then you can uh, just show to everybody on the table to set up somewhere. And uh, just let me know, and I can give you some, some beta textures. Ready? Yep. OK, let's go then. OK, hi from my side. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about view customization on Android. So first, let me shortly introduce myself. My name is Bernhard. I'm originally from Austria, where I studied computer science. Um, I'm now working as an Android developer for about four years, and I moved to Munich uh, in the mid of August. My current employer is Icon Mobile, which is a design and software company with the headquarter in Berlin, but with seven additional locations all over the world, and in total about 170 employees. I'm based in Munich, and I'm working for them at BMW, where we are developing the Android remote apps for conventional and IB vehicles. But actually, all the findings I'm presenting today are all from my Leisure Time app, uh, which is about controlling heatings of certain manufacturer of a certain manufacturer. So let me shortly introduce the app. Uh, on top, you can see um, the basic heating state uh, of the heating and uh, also the outside temperature. On the uh, on the bottom of the app. Uh, I'm able to show dynamic ads, and uh, depending on the uh, actual heating and uh, its configuration, um, the app uh, will show the appropriate screens. So if you swipe from left to the right, you can um, you can switch between those function blocks, blocks, and if you swipe down, you can see additional information about this function block. So, what is a great app about? It's not only about it's not only about uh, what you can do with it, but also how you can do it. So, one lesson I learned during um, my time as Android developer is: don't just start writing code. First, think of what your uh, users want uh, to solve with your what you you want uh, your users to solve with your app, and then. Uh, think of the best and easiest way how to achieve it. So good practices uh, to create mockups and also do some testing with uh, potential users. There are tons of tools out there uh, which can help you with that. For example, one of the most famous one is Sketch, OmniGraffle, uh, Balsamic Mockup, uh, Proto.io or even Photoshop. As you probably can think of any use case, uh, let the users uh, also tell you them. So also provide easy feedback within your app. And another good practice is also to uh, analyze the behavior uh, of your users so that you can optimize the use cases. So let me show you one UX example within my app. Um, Unfortunately, due to the restrictions of the uh, heating manufacturer, uh, people are um, only able to use the app within the home network. So for them, it's sufficient um, to only provide the IP address so that they can connect to the heating. But some uh, sophisticated users are aware of how to use uh, DNS routing. So I was thinking uh, of a um, uh, option to provide them uh, this functionality without confusing the other users. So what I did was in the settings screen, um, you can swipe the header 
and you can get a hidden menu uh, where you can switch from the IP address to the URL and also enable uh, login credentials that you can use for the app to connect. So, but now let's get to some code. Um, hopefully, yeah. You can see there's this uh, nice liquid animation if the water tank is uh, warming up. Sorry. Yeah, so let me give you some um, code snippets of how to implement that. Um, what are we going to do is we create a custom view that extends view group. And uh, we're going to use view group as we also want to do some uh, layout, layouting of potential children. And each of these, um, of these horizontal lines, you can see the, the liquid animation, is represented by one path. Um, so we create a path for each horizontal line and uh, to get this uh, Fading out to the right, uh, we use a certain shader for them, namely a linear gradient, which is just getting transparent to the right. Um, to get the curve effect on the right side, uh, we use the coordination function um, of the path object. And as you can see, there are also bright and darker segments within uh, each path. And to achieve this, we use uh, the dash path and add it uh, to, the, to the path object. So next, what we want to do is to draw this path directly on the canvas. So we override uh, the dispatch draw function and uh, we create our own layer there um, just to be able to reset all our translations and rotations at the end. Then we are drawing uh, the boiler itself uh, no matter if like, the heating is on or not, but if it is heating, uh, we also draw the pipe. So we begin with the, uh, with the boundaries at the beginning, and then we draw each, um, each of the horizontal path. At the end, we're going to use a handler uh, to recall the draw function in order to get uh, the animation. As long as the view size stays the same, also the path coordinates uh, for the boiler don't change. So it would be quite inefficient if we would have to uh, calculate all the path coordinates, uh, coordinates each drawing cycle. So what we're going to do is uh, to put all the coordinate calculation into the on size change method. And as it only needs uh, to recalculate if the view size changes. Another small trick I want to show is about driver resources. I guess every Android developer knows that handling all the different DPI sizes is a big effort. And even due to scaling on some devices, they might look fuzzy there. So another solution you can also think of is using SVGs instead of DPI graphics. So how are we going to do that? We once again create a custom view and when the view size changes, we just draw the SVG with the exact view, view size and place it, uh, place it as a background of the view. So for every screen size, we get always a pixel perfect image. If you're interested uh, in, a, um, in a functional uh, example, um, I will, uh, you can also have a look at GitHub. I uploaded it there with an example project. Next thing I want to talk about uh, is custom touch components. Some, on some views, the user can swipe down to see additional information. So how are we going to implement that? Um, we're going to create a custom view container that keeps two views. Namely the ground view, which is taking uh, the entire visible screen, and the sky view, which is placed on top. 
Um, but it's not visible by default because the viewport is shifted so that only the ground view is visible by default. We once again uh, extend view group to implement uh, this custom touch component. And now we have to take care of layouting the children. So in Android, layouting is a two-step process, namely measuring and layouting. The own measure method uh, calculates the required size of the view. Um, and therefore, you, in, in the own measure method, you get two parameters, namely the width and the height is a measure stack. The measure stack actually contains two values, uh, namely the, the actual size and also the mode um, of, of the size definition, which you might know from XML definition like uh, match parent or wrap content. So the first thing we're going to do in here is to get out the uh, actual width and height. Um, so we use the framework method called default size, which is also considering the mode of the measure spec. After that, we set the entire available space to the parent view itself. Um, it's very important to set um, the measure dimension for the view itself because if you don't do it at the end of the on measure method, uh, your app will crash. So after setting the uh, entire available space for the view itself, we're going to do the same for our children. So um, once again, like I mentioned before, uh, the, the ground view is getting the entire, entire available screen space just with consideration of the padding of the parent view. And uh, the sky view is actually getting only the height which uh, is measured itself because we want it only to be that high as it, it is intended to be. The second part of the layouting process is uh, the actual layouting, uh, which is, by the way, uh, always just called months, except um, like other than, than the on measure method, uh, which could also be uh, called several times depending on the layout you're using. So if you have any heavy uh, calculation going on during your layout process, it's always better to put it in the uh, on layout method. In this method, we force uh, our children into the layout um, with the given bounds. So, um, like I said, before the sky view is on top, we place it on top, and the ground view is just placed below it. It's really important in here that uh, you always use uh, the get measure with and hate methods of your children because get with and get hate, which you would usually use, uh, is not already set because we're still uh, in the layout process. Yeah, the next thing we want to achieve is uh, the swiper based on the user touch events. The basic method for that is on touch event and it always gets called when the user touches or moves on the screen. There are several uh, thresholds um, defined by the framework which you should always consider. Uh, for example, the touch slope which is a scaled threshold from where you just should uh, start scrolling. If we start scrolling, um, what we also want to do is uh, to prevent interceptions from other, especially parent views. Like for example, if you're swiping down or up, you don't want uh, to, to get interception, for example, from the view page if you also would swipe left or right. And then we use the scroll by uh, method to vertically shift the view board. If the user releases, we also want to snap back uh, to the open or uh, closed state. We don't want to leave it in the inter uh, intermediate state. Um, Android therefore provides a scroller class that lets us scroll from, a, from the current to a target position. 
to, the, to perform the snapback, um, we use the compute scroll method, which is always uh, called during the drawing time of the view class. As long as we are in an intermediate position, uh, we keep on scrolling automatically. And the scroller always provides us the current position where we want to scroll to. At the end, uh, we just call the post validate method that just keeps us scrolling till we reach the end position. Yeah, that is from the coding part. Um, like mentioned before, um, if you're interested in, in the full examples of that, you can just go on GitHub. Um, you can find the example project there. And um, I guess if, if um, now everyone wants to do if the app a try, you can do so, just download it from the App Store. Uh, you can enter the following IP address um, because it uh, mocks uh, the, the heating system. You can also give it a try without only the actual heating from there. And so that's it from my side. And if you have any, any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Yeah. For the SVG, is it just for the library or is it just for the library? For the SVG? Uh, no, actually I'm using the SVG Android library, but as you mentioned correctly, like from Lollipop onwards, you can also use uh, the, the framework for that. For sure, I mean, especially in the early days of entry with really low power devices, you can experience um, problems with that. But I think nowadays, with all even mid range or low budget devices, I, I never experienced any, any issues with that. So, of course, it's always something to consider, and that's also the main reason why, why Google didn't do it itself in the platform. But, yeah, like nowadays, I would say there is just no the big deal. Okay, so if you, if you come up with some other questions, I'm also around here, so feel free to, to ask me later. And so thank you for your attention.